Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about LTCM, BCHG, and HZEN, in addition to the Bitcoin spot ETFs. And LTCN dropping by nearly 50%. What the heck is that about? So with that being said, let's get it. So the first thing that I want to show you guys before we actually get into the details here about the uh, Grayscale ETFs is I want to show you guys this news catalyst. So this is a big deal. Okay, we've been talking about this on this channel for ages at this point. Those, those of you guys that are subscribed know what I mean. So you can see these uh, top stories about the SEC and the different companies that are basically going to the SEC to get their spot Bitcoin ETFs approved. Well, pretty much all of these articles here say that they were actually approved. So I guess the real question is, are they actually approved? Well, I managed to find a little bit here that could potentially shed some light on that. So... If you take a look down here at this first sentence under where it says ETF ticker populating on brokerages. And again, this is um, I'll leave these article or this particular article in the description for you guys down below. This says spot Bitcoin ETFs approvals imminent as tickers go live on Bloomberg and Fidelity. Um, it says the SEC will make the official announcement sometime between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. Um, unfortunately, we were not around. We were busy doing stuff. So, um, plus, we also wanted to wait and see before making this video to see if the SEC was actually going to approve the deadline today because January 10th, I believe, is the deadline for ARC, um, ARC Innovations or ARC ETFs or whatever to get theirs approved. So, it turns out that apparently they approved all 11, but did they actually, though? So, you guys can see here under this sentence, it says spot Bitcoin ETFs, including ARKB, which is the ARC version. Again, their deadline, their final deadline was today. Um, HODL, FBTC, uh, which I believe this is the Fidelity one, although it's not populated on Fidelity yet. Uh, BTCO and BTCW. It says they began popping up on Fidelity's brokerage platform. Uh, Morgan Stanley and Weeble, although we have actually not checked on Weeble. We'll have to check on that later and give you guys an update in the coming days. But keep in mind, even though these ticker symbols are actually up, what we want to see is actual trading take place. Okay, you want to see actual candlesticks with volume and all that jazz. We want to see something going on on the charts to prove that it actually is the real deal. Okay, this is going to take a few days, probably a week. It's not going to be immediate. Not everything is going to be apparent right away. So with that being said, let's take a look. Um, as you guys can see real quick, we do still hold LTCN. We did reposition into HSN. Uh, we got a wash sale, but not too worried about that because most of the money that we made, um, the wash sale is on a very small amount. So we're not worried about the tax implications of that. Most of it was a profit, but uh, we also still have some cash. So here's the important piece. Uh, so here's the ticker symbols we want to look at these five right here. So we're going to pop up the trade tab here. And the first one we want to look at is ARKB. So ARKB, as you guys can see here, it is actually pulling up. Uh, there is no bid ask, no volume, none of that stuff yet, uh, which indicates that there's no actual trading taking place yet. Uh, we'll have to see if trading actually starts tomorrow on these. Uh, so the next one is, oops. <laughs> oh. Okay, so the next one is uh, HODL by Vanek. As you guys can see, same thing. It does pop up, but uh, again, no trading volume. FBTC. Uh, FBTC, which is the Fidelity one. Uh, so we got FBTCX, so FBTC has not actually popped up yet. And BTCO. That's the Invesco one. That's with, uh, I believe, Mike Novogratz. He's a Bitcoin billionaire, pretty well known in the space. So this one's popping up, but again, no trading volume. Um, BTCW. So let's go BTCW. Wisdom Tree. This one's also popping up. So as you guys can see, they are popping up. Um, this is a pretty strong indication that they are actually live. They're just not being traded yet because, again, the market's closed. And if you take a look at the time frame in which they posted it, you guys can see so 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The market closes at 4.30 uh, 
the stock market closes at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So it would not really have had any time to trade. So with that being said, um, I, we'll, do, we'll do another video later about what we think the implications for crypto will be on the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. But let's go ahead and get into the charts on the different grayscale ETFs. So um, as you guys can see here on LTCM, we did have a pullback off of this um, RSI being overbought here. You guys can see this thing was getting kind of really ridiculous. It was almost at a 90 so we have a pullback. We're currently out of overbought territory, um, although this may end up chopping sideways for a bit and we might trend down on the RSI just to kind of cool off. We'll have to wait and see. But you guys can see this Whopper pullback here on LTCN from peak to trough was about 54%, uh, currently settled roughly at about 46% on the week. Um, but again, it looks like we have roughly about two days left in the weekly trading session. So what do I think is going to happen with LTCN? Well, don't, don't take this as a guarantee, guys. Nothing's a guarantee in trading. But um, And again, this is not financial advice. But what I expect is that we'll get a bounce off of the EMAs and a push back into this resistance zone of somewhere between 13 to 15 bucks. Again, it's not a guarantee, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. Um, as you guys can see, it has been a long time, if we look at the charts, since we had a golden cross. The last one was actually all the way back here. And we kind of bounced around on it and off of it a little bit before we went up. Uh, very similar thing here. It kind of just bounced around, chopped sideways, and then eventually started shredding to the upside. So I expect to see something similar where we're probably going to bob around up and down on the EMAs a little bit. Maybe kind of range somewhere between $9 and $15. Um, it could go as low as the support. Because again, you can kind of see it got below the EMAs here. So we could go down to the support between seven to eight dollars. That would be your most ideal entry that, in my opinion, I think anybody's going to get. I don't think it's going to come back down here again, but we'll just have to wait and see. So um, HN, uh, it's, I mean, it's looking pretty much the same as it was before, not really overbought. Uh, we're kind of just sitting in the resistance zone. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. This could be distribution and we might be getting ready to dump or it could just be kind of really um, could be setting up to potentially have a serious squeeze to the upside because you guys can see these shorts tried to squeeze or tried to really ram this thing into the ground. And then we got this massive wick rejection here, which indicates buying pressure coming in off the EMA. So uh, if the bears end up getting squeezed out of this, we could end up shooting straight into the next resistance zone between 260 and 295. We'll just have to see. Um, but we're just kind of sitting on the EMA. It's not doing much. Uh, whether it comes back down to this 36 cents to 66 cents, I highly doubt that's going to happen. Because again, um, we were sitting in that area for months and months and months and months. And uh, we're now up in this zone. So I kind of don't really see that happening. So now let's go ahead and take a look at BCHG. I know you guys have been waiting for eons for a buy on this one. So uh, this thing had a pretty nasty drop, as you guys can see from the top to the bottom here, uh, roughly about 42%. That's a pretty huge drop. Um, a very similar situation to HZN. Kind of sellers tried to slam it into the floor. They failed. Uh, buyers basically squeeze the sellers back up right off the EMAs, which is typical in trading. That does happen. It's the reason we use the EMAs. But as you guys can see, uh, very similar to LTCN, chopped sideways into the EMAs and then just started absolutely moonshotting. Where do I think this thing could potentially be a perfect buy zone? Probably somewhere between 250 to 280 or maybe even 250 all the way up to where it currently sits at about 350. Um, could it go lower than 350? Yeah, sure, it could. I mean, it is still pretty close to being overbought, but it's not a guarantee. I mean, it could just chop around on the EMAs and then moonshot again into the next resistance. And by that time, you know, if you had an opportunity to buy and you didn't buy, it'd be too late. So the following resistance is between 530 to about 590 a share. And uh, that's where we sit on BACHG. So with that being said, we're also going to take a look at the Bitcoin miner stocks that we personally are invested in as well. So that would be BT, BT, and Cypher. We picked those because they have the smallest market cap of these five, which is Mara, Riot, Hut 8, BT, BT, and Cypher. 
So currently sitting on the resistance, we're just kind of DCAing in because we don't really know if this thing is going to get slammed into the ground or if it's going to squeeze back up into this resistance here at about five bucks, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, this thing also really got kind of shredded by the sellers. So, um, and this is not just selling that's taking place. Okay. You don't just have bears sitting up here at the top saying, Oh yeah, we're just going to dump on all these guys. That's not how it works. Okay. It's always a two side, two sided story in trading. You got to think about the psychology. So you have people that bought down here or even at the EMAs. Once we got past the EMAs, they were looking to take profit and they were taking profit up here. And the sellers, the actual short sellers probably saw that if this thing can be shorted again, I don't know if it can or not because we don't short uh, traditional stocks for many reasons, but um, if it can be shorted, the, sh the sellers probably came in at that point and said, oh, okay, it's selling off resistance. Let's, this is a perfect entry to get short potential double top here. Let's just go ahead and slam it into the floor. So that's kind of what is really going on here. Just so you guys know behind the scenes, the actual mechanisms of what's taking place. So um, the perfect buy zone, in my opinion, is going to be basically between $3 to where this EMA is currently, $3.30. Uh, I would say if you can get it at that point, that's probably an excellent area to start bulking up buy positions. I mean, you could be taking a look at even from that point, which is not the absolute bottom in my opinion, but from where we're at right now to the top, about a 60% gain. And from the blue EMA, which is about $3 even to the top is roughly almost an 80% gain. I mean, that's huge. That's not even, that's not even talking about being in the actual Bitcoin bull run or crypto bull run. Now, if you wanted to really patiently wait for the bottom again, no guarantees this is going to happen, but you can get in between $1.55 at support to $2 even. So we'll just say $1.50 to $2, very easy to remember. And if I could actually just... Sorry about this trading view. It can be a little complicated to use sometimes, but if I could actually show you guys, if you got a perfect entry from the bottom to the top, you'd get about a 229% gain. So that's a huge gain, but again, you are risking um, losing out on dip buying opportunities if you choose to wait for a perfect entry like that. So Cypher, this is the next one. Again, you guys can see this very bearish shooting star candle here. It's, it's kind of like a doji, but technically it's a shooting star candle. If you guys don't know what that is, go look it up. So uh, just on that candle alone, about a 30% drop from peak to trough, about 38%. And where we currently sit from the top, roughly about 33%. So I would say that, again, similar to BTBT, perfect buying opportunity between 320 to about 350, even where we're at right now, in my opinion, is really good. Um, immediate moves up. So from the blue EMAs to the most recent peak, roughly about 75% from the yellow EMAs to the peak about 59%. And from the current price at the close to the previous peak, roughly about 50%. Um, anything below that you're looking at roughly about 225 a share to about 275 a share would be the perfect buy zone on the major weekly support there. Now, what could these things do long term? Well, we take a look at the charts. Uh, we all know Bitcoin does always does higher highs in um, forward looking bull markets. So uh, expect the price of beat or cipher to at least double to $30 a share. I don't think that's unreasonable. Uh, so from the current price to the previous peak, you're talking roughly a 4x and then from there to $30, $30 a share, excuse me, roughly about a 9x, I would say is probably reasonable. BTBT clearly has much more potential. You guys can see why we're buying this one first. So again, at least double the price from the previous peak. So $33 is the peak. The current price is roughly about a 10x from the highs. So that's what you would get. If this goes to 66 bucks, you're talking a 20 X on this position, assuming that Bitcoin does a new all time high, which I mean, guys, look, 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs just got approved by the SEC. That's these companies combined have more money in assets, the almost more money in assets than the entire U.S. national debt. You're talking almost 30 trillion dollars. So could it do a 2 X? Honestly, I think it could probably do a 5x if it wanted to. I'm just being realistic. I'm not being moon boyish or anything like that, but 
you know, $30 trillion is a lot of money. So you get one tenth of that into um, just one tenth of all that money into Bitcoin. That doesn't include retail and institutions and things like that. That's just the spot Bitcoin ETFs. That's that adds another three trillion dollars onto the crypto market without all the FOMO and all that stuff. So just that alone would bring the total crypto market cap up to just under five trillion bucks. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you all later. Peace.